I was doing research for my French press video when my Google searches kept turning up news articles about how French press is bad for you. Offended by the idea of restricting my American coffee liberty in any way, even a French way, I sought to learn more. Press article after press article claimed French press in the headline, but only mentioned filtered versus unfiltered in the text. I thought to myself, French press is a filter? What do you call that finely meshed metal thing that you use to, you know, filter the coffee? Isn't that a filter? Given that science reporting typically earns anywhere between a B and an F minus in accuracy, I typed in the principal investigator's name, Dag Tell, into Google Scholar and found the actual journal article. The journal article showed a Swedish and Norwegian team studying about 500,000 of their Norwegian neighbors over 20 years and helpfully explained that filtered coffee meant drip brew and that unfiltered means putting grinds into hot water and drinking it in the style of a Turkish or Greek coffee. Still no mention of French press until... Their discussion section mentions French press espresso and pods as having lipid-raising substances. Along with this, I found the 1997 paper that specifically mentions cafetia in the company of Turkish or Scandinavian boiled coffee, and the principal investigator, Dag Tell, did mention cafetia in his group's press release. So at this point, I do have it from the actual qualified scientists that anything without a paper filter, including French press or mocha pot, should be considered in the same category as the unfiltered coffee mentioned. Before getting to the results, first off, Norway is a great country to study the health effects of coffee. They drink about twice as much coffee per capita as Americans, and 88% of the participants in their study drank coffee. Here's what they found. Number one, you should drink coffee. Even drinking unfiltered coffee lowers your death chances compared to being a non-drinker, especially for preventing strokes. How significant was the effect? The hazard ratio for men was around 0.9, and for women it was about 0.85. That means, for women, this means that if you drink coffee, your risk of dying within a certain time window is about 15% lower if you are a coffee drinker than not. However, if you drink a ton of coffee, your fatality rate does go back up. Number two, looking at the deaths caused by either ischemic heart disease, cardiovascular problems, or stroke, you are less likely to die if you drank filtered coffee compared to unfiltered coffee. But the nuance all these glib news articles leave out is that unfiltered coffee has benefits too. Now, bearing in mind that I have no background in nutrition, biology, or oncology, here's what I found. The lipid-raising substances, the d t d t d D-terpenes. D-terpenes, cowiol, and cafe stool? Cafe stall? Cafstall have been shown to exist in unfiltered coffee at about 30 times the concentration as in filtered coffee because the paper filter absorbs them. These have both been linked to elevated LDL or bad cholesterol. So if you just read those news articles and stop, you think, oh no, bad cholesterol must avoid. However, according to a 2019 review article, these two deterpenes have loads of beneficial effects, including being anti-inflammatory, anti-cancer, having tumor inhibition, anti-diabetic, and anti-osteoclastogenesis properties, the last of which has to do with preventing bone diseases. All this being said, I have no idea whether the doses of these deterpenes you get from a cup of coffee are remotely in the ballpark of what you would need to get benefits. So should you change your coffee habits? Professor Thel himself advises that only people who know they have high cholesterol and want to do something about it need to ditch the French press in favor of a drip brew. The rest of us can indulge in our favorite cup instead of being deterred by flashy headlines that gloss over the trade-offs. An extra thanks to Professor Tell for correspondence in helping to fact-check this video before I posted it. These results were published in the European Journal of Preventative Cardiology, April 22, 2020.